Hello. Welcome to True Hoop with me, Gerard Hector, and Coach David Thorpe. How are you, sir? I'm excited to uh, see Henry's beautiful face. <laughs> and then just maybe seven, eight hours from now, maybe my wife and possibly a good bottle of scotch. No, it's no, a good day. Rank notice, him, rank no, him, David. In what order no, are you? Says, no, well, notice the order he just ranked them. He said Henry he, first, and then he said you, his wife. Well, she. We don't know if she's gonna actually make it here or not. She might go to Houston first, but uh, you don't want to know what those rankings. <laughs> I, I know I'm third. It's not gonna look good for you, yeah. Henry. Right? I, I know I'm the first might hurt your marriage. Uh, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. She she's hedging her bets if she brings that bottle. Yeah. yeah. She she wants to make sure she makes me happy. And back from. Parts unknown, although parts mostly known. Henry Abbott, how are you, sir? <laughs> Great, thank you. I'm feeling like <laughs> immense. Like I just, I'm still. It's it's five days later. It hasn't gotten old that I turned in the first draft of my book last Wednesday, I think, and I've pretty much been grinning and eating ever since. <laughs> uh, I don't know why I eat the eating. It's just kind of how it worked out. But um, yeah, no, it's uh, I wanted to bite off a lot and then chew, and I did, and uh, in all ways. In all manner of that definition, yeah. Well, we are very excited uh, for the book. Can't wait for our, our pre-copy. Uh, yes, let us know when that will be coming in the mail. It's so uh, long. Everything's <laughs> just going to take so long. It's just going to be forever. It's too early. I was. I guess I should like talk up the book to market yeah, it now. But it's like course. people will have long forgotten this conversation when the book's finally out. We'll, in we'll time it up. Good. May twenty twenty four. Everyone, like, set your watches <laughs> if nice. you have a watch. <laughs> yeah, that goes up. Far. Is that is that right? May of twenty four. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize it was that editing far. Okay. editing process, man. We gotta mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. okay. yeah, yeah. That's we'll perfect for NBA playoffs. Perfect next year. Uh, oh, and I I bet the topic of your book will be something we will be discussing during the NBA playoffs next year. I'm going to take a take a guess. It's you for know sure. related for sure. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But it's gonna be back with you guys. I uh, I feel like a like an I don't know. I'm I'm super anxious that during the course of today's show, NBA topics will come up about which I will be a complete idiot. And I'm going to feel a little bit out of the loop. And like, I can't name the 11th guy on the Pacers right now. And That's a little, fine. I've been, my head's been elsewhere. That's fine. So look for me to be less valuable contributor. Than All usual. good. Well, the, the, the beauty of this, Henry, is that we don't have two teams to talk about right now. Which is, they're not getting the heat, right? Everybody else is out of the playoffs. It's done. It's the NBA Finals. We're two games in. It is 1-1. One, one, the Miami Heat won game two uh, last night in Denver. And, you know, David, I'm going to start... Uh, here with you well can i say one thing first yes it's either isaiah jackson jalen smith Jordan nora <laughs> really go. depends on who they're playing the pacers all before. right show you off yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. Yes. <laughs> somebody did do their homework <laughs> yeah, david, david did his homework <laughs> gold star on the uh, true hoop sheets for david he gets his star he did his homework um who did not do their homework david last night were the Denver Nuggets in terms of their approach to uh, this game, particularly on the defensive end. Um, that fourth quarter was pretty awful by then, gave up 36 points. Uh, a continuation of how they played defensively in the fourth quarter of game one. They just happened to be up so big in that one and that they won the game anyway. And Mike Malone said, after, excuse me, Michael Malone said after game one that we didn't play well and we won the game. So I've got things to show these guys. And you think, oh, you expect them to come out with a better effort. You knew the Heat would because that's what the Heat do. First four plays of the game, uh, three wide open threes, I want to say, by the Miami Heat. I was like, well, that's not the effort that, that Mike, Mike Malone's talking about. Um, the Nuggets did manage to come back, uh, storm ahead, double digits. Heat went up again, uh, and, the, and the Nuggets stormed back again late. But it was just uneven defense from them. Um, and if they continue to do this defensively, this is going to be a problem for them in this series. Well, let's be specific. So the, of the three threes, for example, that you're talking about, the first one was uh, Jamal Murray jumping for Duncan Robinson three. He shot fake side dribble, took the three. Mm -hmm. The better defensive play there, unless it's literally half a second on the clock, and so by the time you jump and he shot fakes and goes side dribble three, the clock expires. The better play is just to close him out, hands up, don't get in his landing zone, make him shoot over you. The, the they, these guys practice shot fake side dribble threes all the time, and now no one's chasing him. So and he's six foot eight, so you're not going to get him from behind probably if you're Jamal Murray. So that was a mistake of by Jamal Murray. After and the, and the Nuggets had played defense, decent defense on that possession to that point. 
And then the next three was Gabe Vincent when Duncan Robinson came off a curl. Okay, so those, those are the fourth quarter. I was thinking about just to start the game. When, when oh, Miami, my bad. My just bad. just, just to start right. the game when Miami was up 10-2. And it just, again, the, the, the Nuggets were not – KYP. They were not aware of their personnel for – they didn't, reason. yeah, they did not have their ears back, so to speak, like ready to fight from millisecond one. I mean, that happens, you know, there's lots of things that go on in a, in a person's brain uh, when you start a game. Uh, but you, you know, I, they didn't do well offensively either, by the way. Uh, and uh, they just, they looked like they were still playing in the regular season, uh, uh, the first round of the playoffs. And, and just, let's just take big picture narrative here. Uh I thought the Heat had a great chance to win game one with one exception. They might have been fatigued. Game seven, flying out after the game in Boston, getting there at five in the morning in, in Denver. And I know why they did it. They were trying to start the clock. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think that's why they did it for the, the altitude adjustment. They think about 60 hours it takes, 50 to 60 hours. But I thought they played the whole game like they were hungover. They, they, they finally caught, kind of got their rhythm a little bit, but the game was over. Mm-hmm. I don't care what they did in the fourth quarter of game one. It was a blowout. It wasn't really that competitive. The concern we had, and we talked about this on the show, was Boston's Boston's talent. I and their let's face it, they were a top three defense too, not just great offense. Forced Miami to reach another level that they achieved in Game Seven, like they did the first three games. And I thought that absent that that uh, authority from what happened in the previous series, Denver would have to eventually adjust to that. They didn't have to do it in Game One because Miami didn't have it. Yep. But Miami got their, their, their legs back in a sense and their, their, their senses back in game two. And I kept waiting for Denver to finally show up. Even when they made it a game late after mm-hmm. being up for a while, it wasn't because of incredible activity. It wasn't because of incredible force. They never matched Miami's level of intensity, which is what I thought would happen in game one minus the fatigue. That's, I'm telling you, Denver right now is not kicking themselves over X and O's nearly as much as they are the lack of force and the lack of discipline in terms of executing their defensive strategies. And I think that's what you're talking about specifically. And we'll get to that fourth quarter, right? With those miscues they made, that was just not yeah. executing the game plan. You, it isn't the first time they've heard of Duncan, Duncan Robinson faking into a sidestep three or the first time they've seen a Miami wide pin down like that, right? That's number one on their scouting report. So they knew what was going on. They just, for whatever reason, didn't execute. Right. Henry, what did you see watching game two of the NBA finals? Oh my gosh. I took a whole uh, document full of notes, <laughs> but um, I guess I, I did a really fun thing. So I watched Bam out of bio, like play after play after play. And um, on defense, he's like almost like Giannis, right? He's like so super mobile. It's like, you can really see where the attacks are coming from by watching him, um, which is super cool. And then uh, on offense, I don't know. I felt like in the first half, they, he brought it up a lot. Um, we should talk about that. I'm not sure. I, I, well, I, I guess it puts Jokic interesting defensive conundrum, right? When Bam dribbles it up, but, um, but he, and he obviously was aggressive shooting, but like didn't make very many of those shots. And I think I texted you guys like he can make more of those shots. And he did later in the second half. Right. But, um, but actually David, you said something interesting though. You're like, you think he has to have a little different approach to his scoring game. Can you talk about that? Well, the, the whole thing with them is, uh, first of all, they have to get fouled more. They did a much better job in this game. Bam's one of those guys that isn't great at it uh, because he isn't so quick. He doesn't overwhelm you quickness-wise, jumping-wise, size-wise. And so these are all things that help you get fouled more when you have a weapon you can use like that. He's a skilled big, but he's 6'9". He's not a tall guy. So uh, And he's developed a nice little second box jumper, beautiful arc. Uh, I thought in game six against Boston, the, we talked about this, Jordan, and I did on the show, Miami just was so hell-bent on getting to the first box, getting to the rim. And uh, Boston was not fouling them that much. They were fouling them some. They chucked like 29 free throws, but they missed so many shots. And I thought Miami started embracing, okay, if we can't get to the first box, it's crowded. In this case, Denver, I mean, Jokic is affecting Jimmy Butler. Uh, I'd get into the rim. Bam's just got to be confident and assertive. Like, I can keep taking these shots. I, and they're good shots for me. And, uh, and, and he did. He, and and just, just to be clear, they're running their offense through him in the second half. Fourth quarter, Bam has the ball every possession. It's going to Bam in the middle and then moving the ball. Back to Bam, moving the ball. Side to side. It's beautiful, mm-hmm. tactical basketball. Of which, and I don't mean to go up too on a tangent here, but I don't know how anyone's looking at AAU trying to find our next future NBA players or college players 
because it has nothing to do with what we're seeing either of these teams do, you know, side to side movement, passing, passing matters. And so I think Bam, uh, he's the hub of their offense. They don't really have a lead guard, right? Right. There's no Chris Paul. Think of all the great, or Jokic, Bam's the hub. He's got that ability to, to move the ball. He, he had one turnover, pretty bad turnover late uh, uh, after a very good defense by Denver too. And Miami was passing them all a bunch. Denver locked it all up. Bam threw it out of bounds. But I think that was his only turnover in the fourth quarter and very few for the game. So, uh, yeah, you've got to make Jokic pay because you see Jimmy Butler, and I wrote this to you guys, he, he is definitely affected by Jokic. He's getting to the first box a lot and not shooting it. Yeah, yeah. And I think it's – so Jokic is – that's why Jokic is there. So he is seven feet tall. And so Bam's got to continue to be weaponized to the point where at some point Denver is going to have to make an adjustment, especially if they go down. I mean, yeah, if they go down 2-1 because Bam's scoring again, you might see Jokic lift up more, and that's going to create more first-box chances for Miami. And then, and then Denver might be in some trouble. And on the Bam point specifically, right? Game one, we talked about you had 26 points, but on 24 shots, right? Not 25, yeah. 25 shots. 26 not, on 25, yeah. Not very efficient, right? No. Um, but tonight, oh, excuse me, last night, much better. And that hub, as you talked about, Jokic light, I'm going to call it, right? In terms of triple handoffs. Yeah, very and, light, but yes. yes. Very, super, he super was still, light. <laughs> but, we're, we're not, but you're not being critical of him. He was right. terrific, yes. but everything's flowing through him. Yeah, yes. he was terrific. He's like Metal Lark Lemon for the old Globetrotters <laughs> offense. Everything's going him first. Ding on the first Metal Lark Lemon reference of, of the podcast. Um, one, of all-time, one of my all-time favorites. <laughs> I love that guy. The, that fourth quarter, David, where you started talking about some of the miscues, um, I did what you did, and I often do that. I'll go back and I'll watch the, the pivotal quarter, like the fourth I have to watch it in like halftime or sometimes quarter speed because I don't see it as fast to know oh, what the nothing wrong going with that. on right now. Yeah, nothing wrong with that. Oh, my God. Horrendous play everywhere those first five minutes, David. Uh, the, you mentioned the Murray flying at the Robinson pump fake, right? That's plus three. And when the better defensive, defensive play was, as you mentioned, to close out, hand up, don't land in his landing space. Okay, they go up plus three. Nuggets get two free throws. Robinson blows by Murray in the perimeter in, in the corner on the next play. He's already out of the play. You're not... He's 6'8", as you mentioned. You're not going to block his shot from behind. But why go up? Foul. Is this the baseline drive and mm -hmm. one? And one. So I think it's three. So, three. so, yeah, just to be clear, uh, Murray could have closed him out and not jumped. Well, he did close him out and not jump. But his closeout sucked. <laughs> he looked like he was he – look, he didn't look like a basketball player. He wasn't in an athletic position. He ran Rob Robinson off the line. But you should be able to stay connected to Duncan Robinson. And then he went baseline, which mm -hmm. is not the best place for Duncan to be. And then he hit him in the head. Yeah. And one. And then he missed his free throw. Bad. Uh, Nuggets possession. Heat muck up there. Offense. No space shot. Miss. Come back down. Wide pin down. Right? Uh, on, the, on the Gabe Vincent one. So this one's the one where they do. He comes off. He doesn't, cur he doesn't curl to drive to the paint. He comes for three. Miscommunication. Right? Wide open three. Next play for the Nuggets. Jeff Green. Turnover. They come back down the screen again. Same exact play. This time, Bruce Brown's like, okay, if he curls into the lane, I, and you see him, he's waiting for him there, and he's curling. Christian Brown, for whatever reason, I don't know, brain fart. No, no, me too. I'm going with him. Dude, what are you doing? Another wide open three for Dave Vincent. Come down again. Uh, Jokic, turnover. KCP files a three-point shooter. That, to me, those seven plays to start, the, I was like, well, this is. You, I think you I was, by the way, as that's starting, uh, Mike Malone's, they're broadcasting Mike Malone's between quarter talk. Yeah. yeah. And he's like, we have to stop giving up uncontested threes. And like literally <laughs> while this split screen's happening, uncontested. I mean, it was actually, it was a little contested. But that like, was you know. Dr. Robinson. Yeah. But yeah, but like, I'm like, oh, you, that's not a you, sign at all. You miss, <laughs> did I miss a play in there? Yeah. It was after Duncan got fouled going baseline and scoring, mm -hmm. he missed the free throw. Yeah. And then they got the rebound. Oh, and that's yeah. when yes. Duncan yes. Robinson's in yes. front of the Nuggets bench, a little lifted above Correct. it. Correct. Jeff Green is guarding him yes. let me let me use air quotes guarding him <laughs> at 28 feet but he mostly just he's, he's it's as if he's russell westbrook oh yes instead Here of is. pressuring that close yep yep <laughs> he just let him shoot the three this is duncan robinson and duncan catches it that's a f five point plays on one possession are enormously helpful to the team that made it and absolutely tragic for the other team it, was it, that the play deal. where Duncan Robinson made the little stinky face? No. <laughs> you no. know what I'm talking about. I know what you're talking about. Was, that, that was one. 
after <laughs> that was after he curled and scored with the left hand. Okay, okay yeah. let, let's talk about that. Duncan Robinson has a has a great stink face that he makes, and Gabe Vincent has an excellent side eye that he makes, right? And he, he makes does. it at Christian Brown when he's like, "Bro, you guys fucked up that defensive possession, right?" Well, they they fucked up every one of those because <laughs> on those two wide pins, which we we previewed in our preview issue last week. The Celtics gave up one layup a game pretty much on Duncan Robinson curls off that same wide pin. They call it delay screening action. JJ same already thing. talked about it on his pod. Yeah, it's, yeah, you're still doing a wide pin. And um, and so the first time that they ran it, both Browns, both Browns, as it turns out, Bruce and Christian, <laughs> went with uh, Duncan curling. JJ contends it should have been an automatic switch. He might be right. I'll find out today exactly what it was supposed to be. But uh, but it probably should have been a switch. And the read is the curl. Mm -hmm. If 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 he duck if Duncan uses the pin down from Gabe Vincent and lifts yes, up, right. you don't have to switch. You Correct. can do something different. But when he curls, you, someone has to be at the rim. At, at the time of the quarter, Jokic was guarding Bam harder, mm -hmm. uh, which is not bad strategy. People think, oh, you lay off the non shooters, not necessarily, because if you're laying off them, you're not available for DHO uh, mm -hmm. protection. So and also by pressuring Bam you can influence how accurately he throws a pass, okay? You can get help from the weak side, which was Jeff Green in these instances. But in this case, both guys go to Duncan, Gabe Vincent's wide open. Then very next time they run it, they uh, they kind of stay, they're worried about Gabe, and Duncan turns the corner, and Jeff Green does help too late, and he scores. Like, it's just bad execution. And so, so here's the big thing. So not every team can raise their level of physicality and intensity and still execute and shoot well. Uh, you, it's almost like your hair is on fire. You're, you're probably not going to paint your nails real good. You know what I mean? You're not going to pay attention to little details. You're not going to do your taxes so accurately when your hair is on fire. This is, this is the challenge of, of a coach over the course of a season. How do we balance that incredible, almost like urgency at all times with discipline, measured heartbeat, get through our reads, get through our checklists, whatever. Miami has got it conquered. I think we can fairly say. Mm -hmm. They can play incredibly hard, but you never feel like they're manic about it. No. Whereas Denver, if you remember, Jokic got it, ran over Vincent. I thought it was a bad call, offensive foul. Then he smacked him in the head, smacked someone in the head. Bam, smacked like, Bam in the head, yeah. Yeah, they were a little frustrated there when things weren't going so well. And they've not, they, they might be fine in game three. They were not fine in game two. Uh, they when they when they try to ratchet things up, it didn't go well for them. This ain't the LA Lakers you're playing, and the LA is good. <laughs> They're a good team, great defense. All in, second half of the season, Miami's better at this. And then we can't forget this: Jimmy Butler was fine. Yeah, like he wasn't great. He wasn't amazing. He wasn't amazing. He, he was wasn't amazing. Fine. He was just fine. And uh, they shot great. There are two role players played. A couple of role players played great. But like Miami can be better because we know how good Jimmy can be. Um, Henry, you know, we talk about in the playoffs, of course, margins are thin and in the finals, especially this is the razorist of thin and you're trading points for possessions, right? This is, and in that sequence that I ran down, the Nuggets scored two points out of one, two, three, four possessions. Yeah. Jeff Green free throws, right? Yeah. That's it. Yeah. That's it. And this and was, and this was, um, what bam and bench players from mm -hmm. Miami, right? Like just people running really fast, cutting really hard, like. Was this also when they had the twenty four second violation? Like, is this that same period? Um, oh, when they when they had, when they had the out of bound play with the tenth of a yeah. second. Yeah, yes, same. Period. So that let's talk I, that play, but I, that's the one that I rewound like a bunch of times in real time. I was just like, what? Um, so the the Heat are playing zone, and Jokic is standing at the free throw line, and like at the beginning, I guess he's kind of Kyle Lowry's kind of like hands him off to Gabe Vincent, and I'm like, okay, so you know. How do we exploit this, right? Like, mm -hmm. here's the giant MVP with maybe the smallest player on the court, right? Probably. And but Gabe Vincent is just like, ah, like totally bananas, <laughs> just fighting, fighting, fighting. And long story short, they Jokic never touches the ball, no. right? And um, a bunch of stupid stuff happens. Ball goes out of bounds. Then the commentators say, hey, it's, it's good to out of bounds. Like, meanwhile, hold uh, on, S say it in regular English. <laughs> They literally like first. Okay, so first Jeff, Mark Jackson, it wasn't commentators; it was Jeff Van Gundy. Well, first, first Mark Jackson says that he's with one point one on the clock, right. don't you, guard the three. Forget you don't have to guard the three point line. He's right. Uh, and then Jeff says, "Well, you know, you you don't have to guard the out of bounds, the inbounds, right?" My first thought is like, "There's point one on the clock. Anything you do that causes a delay, Correct. like if the ball you is win. touched, like possession over, right?" Mm -hmm. 
So it's me. I'm like, guard it just to see if you can touch it, right? But um, but of course, it also makes it much harder to lob it from under from the baseline. It's a very difficult lob anyway, right? Just and you have it. to lob because the you only thing allowable is a tip. tip. Right. Yeah. You can't pass anybody. So as yeah. the the word the wisdom of Jeff Van Gundy is hanging in the air about why you don't <laughs> yeah. guard this, like then now they're confused that the possession is over. The referee's touched the top of his head, right? Because it's a 24 second violation. And then Mark Jackson explains, oh, there was a 24 second violation because the guy who was, this is the part they meant left out, yeah. super wisely guarding yeah. out of bounds, tried Martin to touch it. it. Yeah. And it oh, did well. <laughs> expire to the clock. There was no, like, my bad that followed up. Yeah, there. I was surprised. But, I thought, I really thought Jeff Van Gunny, I said it to you guys earlier, I thought it would, because he can be deadpan funny. Yeah, yeah, he can. And I thought there was a, and, and self deprecating funny. Sure, sure. And I, I really thought, like, Jeff, of all times to be, to make Perfect. fun of yourself, this is it. You, yeah. It could not have been scripted better. <laughs> you yes. just said, don't guard the inbounder. <laughs> the inbounder forces the, the violation. And it was just, like a crucial play in the fourth right. quarter final right. game. I mean, like, yeah. Right. Just, yeah. just laughs like, well, yeah. maybe you should guard the inbounder. It would have been cute and funny. And he didn't do it. But I really thought... I think like, he realized what happened, actually. That's why. David's point about just, you know, just being comfortable with a high end level of intensity. Like, at the end of the third quarter, Jokic, like, had this period of just, like, he went rim to rim with the ball and just crammed down everybody's throat. Dominated. And then the next play, he dove on the floor. And, like, I felt like, you know, Michael Malone exhausts his best players. And I think that Spolster is a little more artful in delivering his best players to the end of the fourth quarter fresh. The Heat have been destroying everybody. John Schumann tweeted this at mm-hmm. their, their fourth quarter plus minus is plus, like 90. plus 90. 90. It's ridiculous. 90. Ridiculous. Yeah. It's ridiculous um, over the playoffs. So I feel like we saw that. I feel like the Nuggets have, have plenty of fight, but less as the game goes on and you know as we pointed out this was all of the starters except for bam are resting during this period did, did gabe vincent not start uh, he no, did gabe, start gabe so they had two starters but three yeah. three bench guys yep. but still yeah. your point is they have three bench players they yeah. played they played three guys over 20 minutes i think correct off yeah. the bench correct. yeah and so yeah. basically heat players are fight like you know people gave vincent size are fighting people Jokic size effectively well, and like and it, that kind of stuff is, and, or similarly around then, I think uh, Jimmy came in. Uh, how did it go? Um, who? Um, hold on, hold on. Um, <laughs> who fouled a jump shooter on the baseline late? A oh, Aaron, Aaron, Aaron Gordon. Gordon. Aaron Gordon. Aaron Gordon just kind of walled Fouled Jimmy, Jimmy mm-hmm. right? And I just felt like like it's not really fair. Jimmy just got off the bench and he's able to move and cut, and Aaron's mm-hmm. like. Oh, Oh, that was a that was that, but that was a. I thought that was a bad call. I thought the Maybe. rest, by the way, sucked in this game, and Maybe. I was not. Was I'm not, I have no rooting interest. But watching the game again twice they, this morning, they, they miss uh, they miss some. I mean, the the the, the goal, goal ten was horrendous. That was horrendous. Yeah. Jimmy Butler that, out of bounds on the pass. They missed that. Yeah, like, I, I didn't see that. Did you guys see that live? I, I didn't did. see it live yeah. for a, for a made uh, for a made three. Yeah, yeah, I did not. Yeah, I did not see that live. But um, uh, when Butler went by Aaron Gordon, he was trying to take away the three. I really thought that was a touch foul, but um, I mean, listen, mental acuity goes away too, and yeah, so that's they just, the point. yeah, yeah, they just weren't sharp. They yeah. weren't sharp, and but but also this is to the same point. Like Jokic was open against Vincent and Kyle. They could have gotten v- it to him. Yeah, right. Yeah. He's incredible at creating space for himself. And remember that zone allows them to to kind of fortify a defense behind. So, but you can still create angles. Mm-hmm. They just had no interest in doing it. Couldn't figure it out. A tired brain doesn't work great. Later in the game, I think Jokic must have said at, at the bench, like in, in broken, broken English, just get me the motherfucking ball. <laughs> like if I got the little guys on me, you'll see where I put my hand, throw the ball to the hand. That's like what a, we teach our post players. Give us your target. It's, it's like a big mitt right here. Just right yeah. here. Because <laughs> he one okay. time was posting up Butler who is much taller than those guys that you were talking about, Henry. And, and Yoke, these guys know how to seal. So bloop, he was open, yeah. hand, throw it to the hand, mission accomplished. They wouldn't so, do it, though. That's why you fight. All these nugget screw-ups, right? And then Michael Malone is, like, saying on TV. Yeah. Like, basically, like, look at the clown shit. Look at the idiots I got to deal with. Right? He's basically <laughs> he called them saying out this. In the right? right? halftime interview and the postgame. Oh, you know, I'm like, okay, so we can see them on TV because they're – they perform in public. Right. You, however, sir, have the job Correct. of having them know where to go. Correct. Like, like I don't know. What, and what to do, yeah. And what to do. I, I like, was really alarmed at that. Yeah. I'm like, what the fuck? Middle of finals, you're blaming you're publicly. You're inviting us. I'm in my living room. You're inviting <laughs> me between you and 
MPJ? Like, mm-hmm. correct. Go talk to MPJ, buddy. <laughs> like, that's your job. Well, <laughs> it's like, like um, it's really, uh, it's in the document. I, Joe, we don't have to talk about it now if you don't want to, but Spolstra, when he kind of says the untrained eye and the, you know, oh, turning yeah. we'll, Jokic we'll, we'll, we'll in. Get to that. Yeah. My only point is, like, there's, there's a, a better way to handle the media. And, and we're all in the media, but we know we're not going to get all the gold. It'd be stupid. It's, it's like, if you're interviewing a, a, a general in a, in a war, like Here's you better take, right? Come on, <laughs> like this. We're trying to win a game here. We don't have to be so truthful. I uh, I really was disappointed that he, wow. like, as I said to Gerard and Henry before he came on the air, like, Mike, we, Michael, Coach Malone, we understand. Michael, we understand so all of this, but is that what he says? He, he, he's so annoying with that. Like every person whose name is Michael, you call them Mike, and they don't care. Well, uh, but listen, you, you you don't call me Dave because as my no, mom always like, would say, I don't call any David's Dave. No, but people do. My mom would say, she, she said, David, we named you David for a reason. And she said it to my brother, my brother Mike, All who right. was Michael. We will Separate never call that. you Dave. You, you never do. I never that. do. <laughs> you never do. Yeah. So I don't much care. So um, start today. <laughs> my mom's still alive and she cares. Uh, but I, I really was, I'm glad Henry brought it up. I just thought, well, Mike, what's your job? Yeah. Like, if you, are you just well. at a, like a gatekeeper? Well, so you decide when to open the gates, let them in, but it's on them. No, you, it's you, stop saying you, you, you. It's us, us, us. Yeah. We, we, we. And uh, that's why we've been saying on the show for a while. Yep, you know like, what David's going to say. First of all, if he ain't making, if they don't make the finals, he's hundred percent fired. Not, not that he won't be employed tomorrow. Uh, although we're running out of jobs opening right now, so he'll take, a year, he'll take a year off and that'll be fine. But like he and Calvin Booth are aren't friends. Like he ain't playing Calvin's guys except for the draft pick. And who knows who drafted Christian Brown? Because they had two, they had two picks in the first, Peyton Watson and Christian Brown. I don't know who drafted. A lot of times they'll give the head coach a selection. GM will say, I'll take one, you take one. So Brown might have been his pick. Peyton Watson, who's not playing at all, might have been Calvin. But either way, they're, they're not, as far as I know, they're not connecting well. Why trade for Reggie Jackson and Thomas Bryant to not, literally keep them on the bench and Peyton Watson not playing at all? Like, well, you, you could argue. Gerard, it's, a, it's the right question to ask. You could argue that he knows what he's doing. They're in the finals and they're tied one, sure. one each, and they easily could have been up two. It's a choice Michael made months ago to just not play anyone but his guys that were there to start the season. That was a choice that he made. Uh, uh, the depth is the depth. They, maybe Jokic could have gone out for two weeks, whatever. Uh, they, could, they could have lost, you know, um, uh, Brown, who's the, really their backup point guard, Bruce Brown. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I agree with you, obviously. And, you know, they are a deeper team than what we're seeing. And if it gets to game six and seven, it does help that game seven is at home in Denver. But um, do you really want to bet against Miami at that point? Like, I have a, if, if everyone's healthy in game seven, even though I picked the Nuggets in six, I, I would just probably say I, I trust Miami more in a game seven well, if we get there. I don't care we, that it's in Denver. Because we give a huge edge to Spo and something that Henry brought up. Huge. He manages to deliver his best players as fresh as you can be at this point. Right, because Bam was really tired the last two minutes, for sure. For sure. But he, he was the one. They bet delivers on Jimmy, yeah. fresh, late, and guess what he did? Two threes, uh, pretty good defense, I want to say, on, on, on a play. Like, right, and again, if it's just three possessions that matter, fuck. Like, it, this is what – Highsmith played eight minutes. Eight Seller minutes, Seller yeah. played 14. I know he was bad, but – Still, so, other guys are resting. Oh, right. He's able to – and they're not getting – I mean – even if they're losing, they're, they're still within touch distance, right? They come in. All right, we're fine. We're, we're, we're going to do our thing. And I just feel well, like – Kevin Love wasn't tired. Nope. Uh, M- M- Michael Malone just – this is poor, and this may come back to bite them. But, David, this is something I, I talked about with you. Yeah. Okay, so you're the Nuggets, and we don't like their disposition. They came out. They just weren't – they didn't bring the fight to Miami. didn't match their intensity. All that well and good. There's still a one-possession game with 12 seconds to go. Bad or good? If you're the Denver Nuggets, I mean, it, 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 it's all in a sense irrelevant. The game's over. You can f- you, the 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 uh, pleasant Michael Malone will find reasons to be optimistic. The negative version will find reasons to be pessimistic. I would argue, I don't know that we're going to see a good Jimmy Butler. It's been three games in a row now where he's not been the guy he was before that. Maybe maybe four games. I don't remember how he played in game six, but um, uh, Miami shot incredibly well. Uh, Denver, normally in these games, guys, 
you see an uptick in intensity from the team that initially didn't have it. They never brought it. The fact that they scored well late is a part because Miami was just sucking the clock out. And, uh, and Denver made a couple of big threes, one off an offensive rebound with Murray, incredible pass from Jokic cross court, diagonal cross court. Um, I think Denver is more talented. I think they have by far, like by far the best player. Mm-hmm. And they might have the best two players mm-hmm. in Jamal because Jimmy's not playing so well. Jimmy's better than Jamal normally. And yet, you know, Spolster is a huge advantage. And their team believe right now. Miami is Richmond. They're, they're a team believe. And um, maybe Denver will bring their fight. I said to you off air, Gerard, they did against Phoenix in games three and four. Mm-hmm. Right. I mean, games, yeah. games five and six, five and six. Mm-hmm. after losing games three and four. That mattered, I thought. It wasn't easy to beat the Lakers in games three and four. It wasn't easy. They, they, they brought it. They've got to take it up another level against this team. Uh, one thing we talked about preview-wise is Lowry, Martin, Vincent, defend the ball well. Those are tough-minded, quick or athletic or strong or quick-handed in Lowry's case, quick-minded also, defensive players. Uh, they're not easy to score on. Although. This game, both offenses were very good. Mm-hmm. I don't know what Denver shot uh, well. from three, but I know their offensive rating was very good. Denver Miami's shot, was better. Denver shot 39% from three, so they, they, yeah. they were good. They um, both were in the 120s offensive rating. They were the, very high. The issue is, is that Denver only got up 28 threes, and Miami got up 38, right? And so That's by design. Of course. That's, that's why Jokic scored the way he did. Correct. They're, they're staying so, home more. They're taking away threes. Um, but still, even with it being plus 18 in May 3s on, on Miami's end, all the things we talked about, right? Um, so let's talk about Jokic because you mentioned um, scoring, and that was by design. Okay, so, you know, people like to make basketball very reductive, and they say things like, all right, if someone's good at two things, take away the one and make them do the other. It's like, all right, fine. So there's this idea about uh, the Heat. They decided we're going to take away the pass from Nikola Jokic and just make him a score. That's the way you beat the, the Denver Nuggets. And this is Eric Spolcher after the game talking about that notion. That's ridiculous. That's the untrained eye that sees something like that. This guy's an incredible player. You know, twice in two seasons, he's been the best player on the planet. You can't just say, oh, make him a score. That's not how they play. They have so many different actions. They just get you compromised. We have to focus on what we do. We try to do things the hard way. And he requires you to do many things the hard way. He has our full respect. End quote. All right. As a Watergate fan, <laughs> not a Watergate, as a all the President's Men fan, uh, uh, Ben Bradley and on the movie version loves to talk about the non-denial denial. <laughs> that that is a bunch of garbled goo garbage that Spolstra just delivered. He isn't wrong in the sense that it's not so you're not just flipping a switch right. to turn him into just a scorer, but it is fair to say it's a strategy to stay home more, make sure, for example, remember how he was just, a, Gabe, Aaron Gordon was abusing, abusing Gabe Vincent? Where has that been? He had 12 points mm-hmm. in the first quarter of game one. What's, what did he score yesterday in the game? Maybe 11 total. No, a little bit more than that, actually. Uh, 12. Yeah, I mean, 12, I'm just saying. 12 again. Yeah. But- there you go. Point, point made. Uh, so they are choosing, and, and we previewed this too. My guess was uh, they would invite Butler to guard him more. Uh, uh, because he'll just overpower size wise uh, and then just stay home everywhere else. But the, it's a bigger thing of, do we wear him down a little bit? Maybe take advantage of him defensively some, which hasn't happened in my opinion, but for sure they're trying to limit their threes. And also, and this is not something I expected. It's possible that you get into their feelings a little bit. This does happen. Guys sometimes let their defensive intensity wane when they don't feel as involved offensively, you would think it's ridiculous that it would happen in the well, finals. That happens. But human beings do all sorts of weird things. And so they've got, a, they've got, they've got some serious discussions we had in Denver. Like, like fellas, we are in it. This is, this is, I mean, Malone can say all he wants how good Miami is. They got to believe it. I, the way I saw Denver play, I said I didn't believe it. That they, be, that they believe that Miami can beat them. It's the NBA finals, man. <laughs> what are we doing? Uh, Henry, uh, Draymond Green on the Draymond Green podcast uh, had Steve Kerr as a guest after game one. Uh, and, and they talked about, you know, what are the, or sorry, after game two, the last night game, talking about yeah. what did we expect to see? And he's like, and Steve basically was like, well, this is what we did to them in game one, right? In, in our series last year. Yeah. Take away all Jokic spraying the ball to everybody all over the place. And our strategy was we're going to not let him assist 15, 17 times a game. 
He's going to score, fine, but we're going to guard them straight up, take away their threes, limit all that, and that is a strategy that we find to be effective. That, we think, is the best way to do it. And sure enough, it worked. So who's, who's talking malarkey here? Spolstra, <laughs> Steve Kerr, is it all just coach speak? <laughs> so he had, uh, let's see, Jokic ended the game. I mean, when you watch, he's just amazing, right? Everything so is perfect. But he was, so he's 16 of 28 from the floor, 7 away from the line, 11 rebounds, mm-hmm. but four assists and, and five, five turnovers. turnovers. And, um, you know, people will freak out about plus minus stats. I'm not using this as a measure of the quality of play, but the fact is they were outscored by 11 when the MVP well, last year he was on the floor, right? And and actually, you know, interestingly, from the little plus minus analysis, uh, the Heat starting five crushed, crushed, right? And Nuggets bench crushed, crushed. Mm-hmm. Um, that's a little bit of an encapsulation of what we've been talking about this whole show, right? But yeah, yeah, of course, you know, I feel like Eric Spolster should have just said, like, yeah, we'd like to take away <laughs> Jokic's <laughs> passing and shooting and defense and. You know, and, and you know, there's there's and Jamal. There's a million things to worry about, right? Like, yeah, throw it on the list, right? Then, you know, of course it's a yes, right? Like, of course we don't want the entire Nuggets team activated, right? right. right. Well, you're you're trying to make him uncomfortable. That's yeah. one of the goals, especially as someone like Jokic, you can't stop him, right? But you, those five turnovers is a big deal. One of them was a frustrating where you threw it out of bounds, the way Bam did. Later oh yeah, in the that game. was really wild. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. You're just trying to get him uncomfortable, make him have to think a little bit more, get later into the clock. This is what you're trying to do. Well, when you get, you know, what they get out of it also is like Michael Porter Jr., two of eight for the mm-hmm. game, right? Like that's... That's why they did it. That's right, the strategy. Right. That's what you get, right? Is like, he looked terrible. And, the, looked terrible. and, and many of those shots were bad shots. Yeah. Bad they shots. were not Sometimes wide right. open shots. And he had to sit for important chunks of the fourth quarter because... Yes, because he wasn't he was, guarding. Yeah. Right. yeah. And when yeah. Mal- Michael Malone after... At halftime and after the game, talked about guys missing shots and not guarding. Oh, he's talking about Michael Porter Jr. for sure. Yeah. Um, and also Contavious Caldwell Pope, who did not shoot the ball well either. Uh, he had a right. weirdly, he had like a weird bunch play of well. bad plays. One, one yeah, of the worst games I've seen him play, but that shit happens, right? Like, uh, oh, oh, oh and, he, and he's the one with championship experience. Right? <laughs> there yeah. we go, David. Tell us, tell us about Jesus. the importance of championship experience. My goodness. Like, <laughs> when, you know, humans make mistakes, whether they're experienced or not. They tend to make less mistakes as they get smarter. But just because he did it in a championship doesn't mean he's never he played before in championship. He's not going to make a mistake again. Come on. So um, can I go on a quick detour yeah, about yeah. Uh, Michael Porter Jr. for a second? Mm-hmm. This has been on my mind a lot. Henry, better not. Draft. No slander, Henry. Uh, we all love Gerard. Gerard <laughs> loves Michael Porter Jr. So that we were, we're going to respect that continuity of love. We're just going to leave that intact. Um, I am just going to say, let's look at the draft coming up. And it's very, it's hypnotic, right? There are players that we don't know very well, and you're doing your homework. And one thing you're going to notice is like reach, standing reach, wingspan, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know, whatever. You're going to see lateral quickness, all of these tools, right? There's a, there's a tools way to analyze every player in the NBA. There's also a totally different approach, which is like a production way to analyze, right? Like who do you just throw out there and the team wins? That's Kyle Lowry. Mm-hmm. And his tools suck. <laughs> right like he would have the worst combine measurements of all time right standing reach not so good yeah so this series has like where's like the tools champion is michael porter jr right mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. his measurements are that dude is six three not making the nba but he's not six three is he he's got like long arms and he's six ten is that what he is yeah yeah, yeah. um and you know can shoot blah 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 he's got all the tools so i you know i'm not here to say that either one of those is better but i'm just saying that like that thing inside Kyle Lowry's head that makes his mm-hmm. almost useless body super useful, right? Is like, that's a big factor, not a small one. And, you know, the, the, the two players with similar measurements from the draft combine, and you're like, oh, we could take this one or that one. Not even close to true, right? Like, I guarantee you one of them is way better than the other one because of stuff that will be, you know, pl- skills they'll develop later for work mm-hmm. they're going to do because of the brain and approach and spirit that they have. Right. And, mm-hmm. and to me, that's where like, like MPJ, I, you know, I spent a fair amount of time watching him in game one. And I'm just like, like there's so many moments when every set of eyes on the court is like lasered in on, like, we all must jump for that ball. And there's like one set of arms that are down. It's like, mm-hmm. why didn't you see it, buddy? You know? <laughs> like, like, why, why didn't you, you? see it, buddy? <laughs> Well, he's been he's been criticized for not chasing down shooters with urgency. Yeah, like which he did better rotation. in game one. Which he did much better in yeah. game one. He was good in game one. Like he didn't shoot you think the ball. He's nervous. Well. 
look, I, I, I we talked about this on the show, David. Part of it is what I talked to you about, Henry, is like when you've grown up and like you've been the super duper scorer person, your whole, like, that's a very hard label to shake in your brain, right? We're so a what long I do, way from that, though. <laughs> right? but, but, but like, right, but that's, that's who I am, right? I am yeah. the that high school class with all those guys in, it, in that trap. He was the best guy, right? Like, yeah. that's what I do. Okay, the back surgery is there, to whatever. So you got that to come over. And that situation with his brother who is uh, on trial for vehicular manslaughter. Uh, I don't know for sure because I haven't asked any, but I, I know that has to be playing on his mind because mm -hmm. he moved to Denver to be like the brother moved to be close to, mm -hmm. to, to Michael. So they are very close. And mm -hmm. so that for sure, I know is playing on his mind somewhere, somehow. Yeah. But, but he also needs it's, to get better at basketball, right? It's like, all yeah, of those things can be true at once. <laughs> yeah, right. It, uh, um, you know, just to finish Henry's point, I got to know a player that was in the draft for a bit. He's out now. His name is Elijah Martin. Man is six two and a half, six three, six seven wingspan, forty inch, forty two inch vertical. Played at FAU, who no one's ever heard of before. Well, I have because well, it's my nephew. Have, I mean, my I nephew went there. Right. Then they went to the Final Four <laughs> yeah. and lost with a second to go in the game to make the championship. And I think they could. I thought they were the best team in the country, but they had no NBA prospects. People thought Elijah Martin was their best player, but he doesn't look the part because he's a six two and a half, and he played the four for them sometimes. Uh, well, I had lunch with Elijah and his head coach, Dusty May. And Dusty had told me already, I know who the best player was in our team. <laughs> it was that dude that's sitting over there. And, and um, he wasn't invited to the combine, like not even close. And no one even wants to see him. He had a couple of workouts. Like they, they, now watch what happens. They'll do the same thing next year. And then they'll start realizing, oh, there must be something there because he's terrific. But when I was watching him work out in LA, I was with an NBA player who was a starting level. He's not starting level. He started a ton of games, more than half the season um, as a guard. He saw that dude. He's like, oh, man, I wouldn't want to play against that guy. He was built like a freaking fullback, moves like a tailback, six, seven wingspan, and you can't screen him. And he can shoot the three really well, too, and he dunks like Donovan Mitchell. But he's just in a small package. So he, he's got some tools, but mostly he just finds ways to win. Doesn't force things. That's what Dusty was telling me. He was the key. They're very good, but he was the key to all of it. Uh, I, I wrote, I tweeted last night. How, Jokic is so otherworldly. You can't miss that. Giannis is different. Giannis was just so unseen. And it, it's, it was hard to figure it out. Jokic was just heavy. Big deal. You can't teach guys something to grow. Very you can big. teach them how to lose yeah. weight. Yeah. You, you can, can teach them how to lose weight. weight. <laughs> Like whatever, love what, too. of course, but yeah. he was known yeah. because of high school and that yeah, I love, it looks amazing now. So, uh, it, the teams have to, do a, have to do a better job of all of that, but I don't, we can't get past this point to your point about role players, like to end the draft. These, these Miami heat guys that Gabe Vincent was terrific. He's fantastic. I, yeah. I, I think we need terrific. to stop, like, referring to them as undrafted and well, whatever, only, right? I'm only saying it for the draft. Yeah, yeah, for, like, we're so caught up right. in all these other things. Find me a Gabe Vincent. If I'm an owner of a team, I am saying to GM, I'm grabbing him by the tricep. Find me a Gabe Vincent, please. I don't care if they're projected to be drafted or not. Everyone needs that guy. If we have to draft him, fine. But make sure we get him. And I'm well, like, Henry. please let go of my tricep. <laughs> <laughs> well, and that was the one place I could grab when I was when I was coaching all these tall guys when I was a high school coach. Please it was the only safe tricep. place I could grab anyone. <laughs> we will find you a backup point guard, sir. <laughs> <laughs> please let go of my tricep. But Henry, there's something about brains, right? And like what they matter, yeah. yeah for, for sure. And what and, and how we see and process things, right? And when we watch a basketball game, what fires up our synapses, right? Are like dunks and like amazing feats of obvious athleticism, right? Like, because it's just, it's easy for us to conceptualize and go, oh my God, that's so incredible. Versus I can't tell how fast Draymond processed that pin down on the other side and got like, right? Because that was a little like, well, we kind of just moved over here. I don't really under, right? That requires a little bit more deeper thought. And it's the same thing with the draft, right? It's easy to see, oh, look at that guy, six foot 10, you can jump really high. Like, Okay, sold versus, as you said, Kyle Lowry, I, he's fat and short. And I don't really like understand like 
What's yeah. happening here? Like, it doesn't do anything. That makes my stance inspire. Well, and it's like, right. it, we, we want to do like sword fighting, right? We envision sports <laughs> as like this really exciting, like, you know, like gladiator. Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and there's some of that, right? But like, you know, David has included us on this little text mm-hmm. group of he's so texting fun. players. And we and like, I hope you don't mind me telling this little story. But like, you know, one of the most recent ones he sent was Duncan Robinson, mm-hmm. a fakes a three, and he's already got his knees bent, right? His hips are low and he's in shooting position. And then um, he sidesteps as the defender flies by. This was last night. Yeah. yeah. And he keeps his hips down. So then he doesn't have to like start initiate Reload. a whole new mm-hmm. shooting sequence in the new spot. And then he drains a three from there, right? Okay, I guarantee you that there's a bunch of players who get in the, the day that they teach that in the gym. <laughs> well, actually, there's a bunch of players who don't get that, <laughs> which is a shame. But there are a bunch of people <laughs> and they're like, ah, I just want to hoop, yeah. right? But like, you're talking about all this weird shit. <laughs> like, and like, or, you know, all of the pick and roll reads and all, like, right. the way that you really become an elite NBA plus minus type player, right? A mm-hmm. Kyle Lowry player is just interpreting all of these little things that are very different from cooking your defender with the ball, right? <laughs> so all these little things, like little the things that I think probably a lot of people don't see yeah. as basketball. Right. Right. They're like, right. do I have to learn all? No, man, I'm going to go back to what I grew up doing. Right. I'm cook this and I dude. think it, <laughs> your tall, your appetite for this. And it's the same stuff. Like, you know, this book I'm writing about P3, like, you know, they're telling you like, Hey, when you work out, you need to, you know, really focus on like these drills that are unlike anything you've ever done in your life. And it's going to feel weird, but we're going to like connect your right hip to your left hip in a meaningful way. That's going to help you long-term. And they're like, I think I'm going to squat, you know, like, <laughs> like, you know, like people just, it, you know, it takes a special brain to embrace new challenges yeah, yeah. in the core of your being. Like, this yeah. is like what you do for a living. You're defined by being good at it. And they're telling you do different stuff, right? David's <laughs> yeah. telling you that Marcus Hell is telling you that they're like, just do stuff that isn't the stuff you used to do. And I think a lot of people are like, fuck that. Struggle. They struggle with that pivot, you know? Henry, Henry just encapsulized uh, America's challenge with having to wear masks. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They could, they just yeah. they couldn't do it. Didn't yeah. matter. With, it didn't matter what the science said. Yeah. I'm just going to, I'm, I'm just going to hoop. This mask is weird. Right. I could I probably just shoot hoop. something. Would that help? <laughs> I could do that. I'll shoot COVID, right? I could right. shoot COVID. Right. Yeah. It's it. something, it's, it's funny you say this too, though, because. I'm a big believer as a coach that everything we do in this game can, can build up uh, a good foundation for us as we attack life. And when I was a high school coach for a long time, I used to always say, I can help my guys make jump shots, which means they'll listen to me more uh, when I'm talking about more important life lessons. And uh, this is, you know, I was watching a, a Congressman Jamie Raskin interviewed yesterday and he's suffering f- from cancer and getting, so he's wearing his little bandana. Mm-hmm. I, I, I've had a mother-in-law recover from ovarian cancer six years ago, amazingly enough. She's 85 and still kicking. Um, you know what? You got to change your shit or you're definitely dead. Mm-hmm. Like they, they, the world throws us curveballs all the damn time. Yeah. And so it prepare, if you embrace it, you, you can, doesn't mean you're always going to like what you have to do, but you're ready for it. And uh, just hooping isn't, you, you know what? You can just hoop all you want. You're going to hit your ceiling. Because the other guys are trying to keep you from hooping. This isn't this isn't Broadway. I heard a uh, 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 singer talk about this. An actor, like he was. A, oh, Jason Sudeikis talked about mm-hmm. it because he played high school at the junior college basketball. The guy played Ted Lasso. But no one's against you. You're fighting yourself in a sense as an actor or a singer. But the audience is rooting for you, man. Typically, it's not not in competitive sports. They're doing everything they can do to keep you from what you most. Hey, Duncan just wanted to shoot a three. Can't I just shoot the three, Jamal? <laughs> right? Jamal jumped and, right. and okay, I've been preparing for this. Free a shot fake. It was a full shot fake. The ball Excellent. went up to his head. His hip stayed down, knees bent, side dribble left, boom, three. And the reason why that's super valuable is you might be running up against the clock. And if you have to dip back down mm-hmm. too late, or maybe Jamal recovers. That shit is something we practice all the time. Shot fakes stay down, butt stays down. Hips stay down. We teach that stuff just like that. I love it. Now, listen, David's little coach's corner that we get on those tech. Mm. I'm like, oh, this is such good stuff. And then I repeat it to my friends, and I sound so smart. I'm mm-hmm. like, oh, look at this awesome thing right here. Yeah. <laughs> that, that not really why I designed the virtual library. <laughs> <laughs> no, nope, it, it's not for me to be smart when I talk to people weird. Uh, 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 step uh, out of the center, David. Yeah. <laughs> listen, just I, I'm not right here. I'm not. I'm not. A, I'm not bad about it. But. We've got NBA coaches on that group now, college coaches, NBA players, college players. 
high school players who are serious. Um, there's, there's a lot going on in these games. There is. There's a lot going on in these games. And uh, I think Miami does so many things well. They do. And, they, and, they, and Denver does too, but they lack that ferocity sometimes. And big physical forces tend to win the day always, right? They just do. And, and Denver's got some serious soul searching in game three. They're good enough to win game three for sure. Yeah, I mean, for sure, yeah. they're 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 good enough to win this series. Um, and without Jimmy, without Jimmy, especially, we need like I don't care who wins Game Three. I like to see Jimmy Butler play great because that's going to guarantee us a six seven game series. It, it, you know, it, Jimmy may be hurt and may be tough at this point. He's, right, he's leading the playoffs in total minutes. I mean, it, you know, or he's or he's up there, right up there. I mean, it's you know, he's now, yeah, he, he's he's done a lot. Uh, David, last thing on this game, and Henry, um, I don't know if you guys saw this after the game. Nicole Jokic was asked about mm-hmm. Michael Malone talking about the team's uh, lack of effort. And he's like, oh, you know, when you were in the huddle, what, what were you guys talking about? And Jokic turned to the PR guy, Nick O'Hare probably, who was up, up at, the, at the podium. Do I have to answer this question? And they moved on to the next. And I was like, oh, boy, that is telling. Um, David, you want to share some thoughts on what you think was happening? <laughs> I think Jokic was really mad. I, it was very obvious. I got a text from a Nuggets player. I told you guys, I thought it was uh, 18 seconds after the game ended. <laughs> That's how fast I got the text. Pretty much all caps, like, what the fuck is going on uh, in terms of how hard we didn't play? And, uh, and that's, the text didn't stop last night. Um, I think Jokic, you could see it. I felt, I don't love, maybe I'm wrong on this, I don't love the camera being in the loser playing, loser player's face. Mm. MVP or not, like... Do I have to see Jokic up close and personal as he walks through the tunnel? <laughs> Honestly, I don't. I don't like it. It's in, it's asking for trouble. Yeah, yeah. Like, like who? I mean, imagine, imagine being absolutely punched in your gut, and then having someone film it. I just, I don't like oh, that. I don't know if you guys saw this uh, throughout the playoffs. Whenever the camera would be in the huddle for the Celtics, Tatum would visibly take his hand. And yes, just I the did. Camera away. I only saw it once, but I saw yeah. it. Did it like yeah. a few times in the playoffs. I, we don't need I, – I mean, listen, during the game is one thing, but when they – do do show the winner. Not that he'll be celebrated necessarily, but I feel like Jokic knows. You know, he's – I mean, such – gifted is not even the right word. It's, it's unfair. It's like calling Mozart gifted. <laughs> um, but uh, like he knows, like, we needed to go 2-0. That we had to win the first two to know we're going to win the series. This ain't Phoenix versus Milwaukee. They don't got Giannis. And we have Joker. So it's it's a different world now. That's why I thought they'd here to go seven before. I thought Miami would win in seven before they had to go to game six, game seven against Boston. Uh, I, we're looking at that now. It's going to be a long series, I think. Henry? I thought, I, I was like, he just did Michael Malone a huge favor, right? <laughs> Michael Malone's supposed to motivate yeah. people now, right? And meanwhile, Jokic is from, we know his brothers are total Tough. nut jobs. Right, mm-hmm. you get kind of violent vibes, right? <laughs> yes. And uh, <laughs> well, they they give off the violent vibes. They do. They That's do. on purpose. Yeah. They do. And uh, and his, you know, uh, our guy Tom Bella wrote some beautiful stuff about Jokic and, his, and like his dad is kind of a mm-hmm. big character. And mm-hmm. um, it just and you know, Jokic mostly doesn't express that, right? Like no. he, I think he pretended he didn't care about the MVP this year, but how could he not care, right? Mm. The MVP, like three he cares, times in a right? row. Mm-hmm. And uh, and since the day of they announced that vote, like he's crushed everybody. Right. And to me, when we saw the camera marching off and then, you know, dismissing that question, I mean, it was, it wasn't just like, it would have been easy for him to be disarming to that question. Mm -hmm. If he didn't care. He's angry. Instead, he, it was almost like a construct to make it seem like the big, like he was beyond words. Right. It's like, do I have to answer this question? Right. And just like, no, you're like, great. Next question. Like everyone's like, (gasps) right. Like to me, I'm like, if you're Michael Porter, when you're watching that, like, we got tomorrow's practice wrapped up. Like this guy's gonna <laughs> cut hard and, and jump high. And, and that is, and that is a big key to Denver success all year. They have a great leader. Yeah. He's not, he's not full of BS. Yeah, he he walks the walk. Absolutely. I mean, when's the last time you saw them play and think, well, he's not trying? Like yeah. it just doesn't happen. And uh, and has everyone's respect for sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, from what I know inside Denver. Yeah, I, I think you're right, Henry. I think that Mike Malone doesn't do a damn thing. I, again, what does he have to do anything? Well, Jokic. wouldn't it be cool? Honestly, I was like, Mike Malone should just be silent. 
Yeah. You should just give them the silent treatment now. No text, no calls. Like, right. just take a day of just like, you guys figured the fuck out, right? Like, right. Um, right. Maybe better than what he had to say, you know? Big, yeah. big Papa Jokic is going to lay yeah. down the law for game yeah, three. Yeah, 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 yeah. no, they're, yeah. they're, they're going to come. I imagine them coming out with a much better effort in game three. Now, how well they play is a different story right. because Correct. sometimes you don't manage that, mm-hmm. that, that, that rise in, in uh, emotion mm-hmm. and energy. They have to manage it. No doubt. Um, a few things uh, we want to continue to talk about here uh, before we end the show. Uh, there are familiar faces in different places in the NBA. There's been some coaching carousel going, carouseling going on. Um, Adrian Griffin to the Bucks. Terry Stotts is on his staff. Interesting hire, I thought. Uh, a rookie head coach on a contending team. But then when I saw Terry Stotts, I was like, oh, <laughs> okay, <Right>. I get it. <laughs> You know, if anything kind of goes a little haywire, this is, this is going to be the guy, right? Really doing the thing. More and more just, I think, I mean, you're not wrong with that, but it's, it's, a, it's smart for that. Uh, it's also, um, there's little things that Adrian Griffin's never done before. Mm-hmm. So whatever, whatever, including pacing yourself. It's nice to have someone who's done it for so long if they have a real relationship, which I don't know about. Um, just to advise them like, hey, you know, you're burning the candle too much. You know, take a week off, take a weekend off, or whatever. That can really help a lot. Yeah. Uh, Nick Nurse. Well, I'm sorry. We had any of the 76ers to coach Joel Embiid for sure. Or actually, I don't even know for sure, right? Anything. I wouldn't. I would not say anything's for uh, yeah, sure. Never mind. He's for sure going to coach the 76ers. Who's on that team? Right. I don't know. <laughs> but right. that, that's what's happening there. That's going to impact whether James Harden is resigned. I would imagine. And I don't know how Embiid feels about Nick Nurse. And I would imagine he has to feel good if he wants to stay, I guess. I spoke to people connected to Harden. Uh, they don't know what, what he's going to do. Harden, the agents won't make the decision. Uh, Harden will. Um, but if Harden doesn't go back to Philly, mm-hmm. I can start seeing Embiid thinking it's time for me to move on. Yeah. Yeah. This is funny, Henry. You had said, and this is months ago, you could see some big names moving this summer for – a variety of reasons. How are you feeling about that now? It seems like it's got to happen, right? I mean, there's... Dame um, Lillard. We had a weird thing where, um, you know, the luxury tax commitments going forward are huge. Mm-hmm. And so a lot of teams, a lot of billionaires had very big expectations and most of them didn't pan out or even close, right? Like all most of these, you know, like think how much the Warriors are paying and the Clippers mm-hmm. are paying and like how far they got, right? So... Those are the situations that get really volatile and someone needs to be blamed and there's going to be change. And it's very hard to bring back the same very, very expensive team, right? Um, when the luxury tax is going to get worse. So, yeah, and I, I think we have this this reality of, you know, someone, all, it, all, there's going to be 10, 12 teams that need change and um, good players available, right? Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. David mentioned Dame Lillard because my current obsession is like... <laughs> the Trailblazers. Well, I'm a Blazers fan, and it is a real like they're right in the eye of this like decision time, right? <laughs> is they can be a young team or an old team, and there are a lot of teams in that kind of jam right now. L- yeah, let me tell you guys how devoted Henry is to the bit of the Portland Trail Blazers. In our true group chat, I said, "Oh, you know, John Morant's probably going to get sat for half the season. We got some things going on here." It's like Henry's like, "Well, you know, Gerard, it sounds like it's going to be a mess in Memphis. Why don't you give us Triple J? We're happy That's to take him." The kind of thing I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, we, we mentioned the Raptors uh, still don't have a head coach. So that's something that's a situation to watch. Um, and the Suns got Frank Vogel. And they were potentially going to lose Kevin Young, who was rumored to be, who's their assistant coach and Armani Williams, was the leader to be that head coach for a while. And then all of a sudden, uh, Frank Vogel comes in. And from what is being reported and what I understand, this is a Matt Ishbia thing. Um, you know, new owners, billionaires like to do their thing. They want the splashy big name. We know Frank Vogel. He works. He does the thing. But we're also going to keep Kevin Young on the staff, make him the highest paid assistant. And I was like, okay, sure, I guess that makes sense. Uh, but they have roster issues too, right? Like they gutted it to, to trade for Durant. Okay, fine. You got Durant and Booker. Is he going to be able to, he being Vogel, get the best out of DeAndre Ayton? What are you doing with Chris Paul? Um, there's, there's a lot to to worry about in, in Phoenix. I You know what strikes me this summer? Uh, is they did this research and David hates this research, but, um, you know, like basically if you look at players productivity over their careers and are there stops where it jumps, right? Mm-hmm. So this would be, or is it, is there a big pattern of a coach making difference for multiple players? Right. And the research was, this was Wayne Winston back in the day advising, um, Mark Cuban when the Mavericks were looking for a coach and, um, 
when they end up with Rick Carlisle. But basically what they found was that almost every year, there's like a maximum of three coaches who are really making a measurable difference over what mm. you'd expect, right? And it doesn't mean the other, the other 27 don't matter. It means that they're all about the same. Mm. And th that has been studied lots of different ways. I've been to lots of Sloan conferences and like, you know, these guys, they're the same guys, right? There's like 45 or 50 NBA head coaches in the world and 30 of them are employed at a time and they just rotate. Right. And every now and again, Adrian Griffin or Steve Nash joins the club. But like, it's not, there's not a ton of like, yeah. we're getting Ettore Messina from outer space or whatever. Right. It's more just like, ah, reshuffle, 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 <laughs> reshuffle. Right. And like, so in the reshuffle game, which is what this entire summer yeah. has been, like, probably not a big difference. Like, yeah. you're, the odds are that no one's going to be the magic one. Right. Yeah. It yeah. might be like, you know, when Monty Williams is new in Phoenix, like sometimes like everyone's like, oh, this was the new voice we needed. Right. And mm -hmm. there's a little bubble. Right. Mm -hmm. But it's not like the yeah. whole idea that like, oh, this retread is so much better than the last retread we just had. Like, it's not really scientifically valid to expect that, right? Like, it's just another guy. So first of all, I I, I don't not like that study at all. I like okay, that study. Go. No, yeah. I'm, I, I think most of these coaches are all about the same. But the owners don't believe it. No, they don't. They're paying these guys outrageous. I made a mistake. Outrageous. And I, I, I have to visit my son. Who I've always wanted to go and look to be executive, but son, if you can one day be an NBA coach and get paid eighty million dollars to get fired in four years, do it. <laughs> you can have a nice life after that, buddy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Crazy you know, money they're paying these guys. Crazy. When you get like you know, and I, I know Warren Legary. I love Warren. I love talking to Warren Legary. He's like the most fun conversationalist in the world, and he'll he's on the almost on the point of tears. He gets so worked up about how fucking magical Dave Yeager is. Like he's just, you know, he's just like, this is his job, right? right like yeah. he can get you like legit excited about Dave Yeager <laughs> and like Dave Yeager's great. He had a good run. Maybe he'll get another one. But right. like, I know yeah. that he's in this like 27 way tie for, for fourth yeah. place among NBA <laughs> head coaches, right? Like that's just where everybody is, except for like now and again, there's a Phil Jackson. Like, it's supposed to like, whatever. Spo yeah, and like, yeah. you know, but yeah. everybody but, like, else, you're all about the same. Like, Pop, Spo, yeah. Lou, Kerr, maybe Kerr, top yeah. four. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's where we are. Yeah, and everyone else is just but, not Lou, but Lou wanted Phoenix. He don't. He must I not mean, be able to get them the yeah. money he wanted uh, to that, leave L.A. That's that's yeah. what I heard. That's what yeah. I heard. Kenny, Ack, I think Kenny. Go keep your eyes on Golden State. Kenny Atkins said could take Toronto, mm. and Bob Myers now gone from yes. San Fran. We yep. talked about it last mm -hmm. week. Maybe Steve Kerr's got one more year. We're, I'm hearing. Steve Kerr to San Antonio, Ooh, that he's going to take over for Wemby, but for <laughs> for Pop, uh, uh, which means Kenny, because Kenny could stay Golden State and maybe get that job, but not if he doesn't like those owners. Yeah, yeah. So it was a lot of palace intrigue. And Always. will Jim on Green listen to Kenny Atkinson? Like it matters. <laughs> <laughs> well, will, will they pay? Will they pay him? Well, that's will the other question. Him? Yeah. Um, there's also been a lot of upheaval on the Celtic staff, by the way. Um, a couple of the, three of the assistants went down to Houston with Ime. Um, David Sotomayor already left in March. Um, and now Sam Cassell is the top assistant on Joe Mazzulla's staff. So, you know, just stuff to uh, pay attention to over there. A um, couple quick things. The NBA, Adam Silver does his, you know, state of the NBA um, when he's at the finals. Next season or next spring, they're going to work the new broadcast deal with whoever that's going to be. And we've kind of speculated here. It's going to be probably part what it normally is linear, but also some kind of Amazon Prime, Apple, whatever. Some of those. During this, like the NBA's bills are all being paid right now by <laughs> Disney. Yes. And the chief sponsor of the finals is YouTube TV advertising yes. more than cable for less yes. than cable. <laughs> like, do you know how tense those meetings are? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like we're using the, the expensively constructed network of uh -huh. Disney to yep. spread the message that like cable YouTube bullshit. Is your <laughs> oh my God. I bet those what are awkward fuck? conversations. Oh my God. <laughs> Disney, Disney absolutely will be a player. In this. Um, they, they mentioned NBC uh, talked about it as well. Who knows what Davis Zaslav is doing at Time Warner? Because as you know, HBO is now Max only, which I'm like, what, the, what are you even doing, bro? Yeah. Who, who knows? Yeah. So uh, that'll be I, interesting. I would love to read that book. The, the HBO Zaslav. seemed to be one of the best iconic. Brands. A brand name that everybody knows, and you decide, nah, it's not, it's not, just make it match. I was what? surprised at that, but with, that's another Fucking show. Saslov, whatever. Um, anyway, but the most interesting thing I thought Adam said was an expansion. Yeah, that's probably coming soon, which he's been very like, oh, whatever, expansion, we're ways off from that. Now, all of a sudden, it's as soon as we not get anymore. this TV deal done, yeah, expansion's coming, which, okay, which we all on this show know that that was something to talk about. Here's what I say about all that. Look, 
I don't give a shit. Expand, whatever. I don't think they should personally. I think that there's plenty of talent the way it is right now. If anything, we should contract, but that's a different story. When I buy League Pass, can you get rid of the fact that I need to also have cable and 95 other things to watch every game? No matter, I don't care where I live. If I own NBA League Pass, I should be able to watch every team regardless of what market I'm in, period. Fix that. Don't give me no AIs in the middle. I don't care about putting yourself in the middle of the game. Don't care about any of that shit. I want to watch but here's the all problem, 30 Rod. teams whenever I want, period. We, End of story. We, we true, you're right, right? But, but, but we League Pass subscribers are a insignificant number of people they don't care about us it just doesn't matter how they treat like we're diehards they might lose 20 percent of us because the whole product absolutely fucking sucks but like <laughs> fact but like you know they it's don't just, they don't care it doesn't, it's a, it's not that they need they need a billion people to watch this game and i don't know the six figure number of people who have league pass but like it's not a big it's just a they just don't care it's about a little us. Speck. Such a shame it's like just a, shame. a little spec so here's an idea no one watches our game let's add two more teams yeah good idea well, but, but yeah, but this is how the league makes decisions, right? It's like, does it deliver immediate um, financial or other benefit to the billionaires? Yes. And like the two expansion teams, the answer is like hard yes, yes. right? Expansion fee is going to be makes huge. Up, makes up for their COVID losses. Yeah. Huge. Yeah. Because those, um, expans- those expansion fees are, want to say, are like three and a half billion, something of that nature. Divvy that up 30 ways or however they do it. That's a nice chunk of change. Yeah, it used to be like, you know, 300 million. And then it was like, ah, no one really wanted to expand. But they just like, you know, we could charge a lot for this. Yeah, as in, as in the Memphis Grizzlies were sold for 335 million, I think it was. That wasn't long ago. Worth yeah. way more than that now. <laughs> yeah, now, it's, now they're saying probably close to 2 billion for that team. Um, last thing, FIBA World Cups this summer, David. Uh, they announced some of the, t- uh, the players who have committed. Anthony Edwards, Harry Halliburton, Austin Reeves, Mikael Bridges, Bobby Portis, and Jalen Brunson have all committed to play FIBA World Cup. Yeah. Austin Reeves surprised me. He does, he'll get paid. Um, normally, I don't like guys doing that until they get paid. Mm-hmm. But if you, if you already got the deal kind of in place, it's yeah. fine. He'll have it signed by the time they actually play their first game. And I need a free agent. I would be surprised if Jaron Jackson Jr. doesn't get an invite uh, to the camp as well and some of the other like really good young players. It'll be interesting to see. I wonder if the Blazers will let him go. <laughs> <laughs> Let's. I got finals and draft. And then you'll worry about FIBA World Cup. And then a vacation to the Dominican Republic after Summer League. Oh, and Summer League. Oh, Summer League. Better vacation. Okay. And then we can talk about the World Cup, which I'm happy to do. <laughs> Although I'm, I'm keeping... Thinking- one of those right. players is going to have a terrible injury next, oh, next season. No, just, I mean, you're, you're that's how it goes, pro- you're man. Right. Jalen no, Brunson needs to put his play. Feet up. Yeah, he needs yeah. to not play basketball. Was, <laughs> well, he wasn't on the list, was he? Oh yeah, I mentioned him. Yeah, he's going. <laughs> look, look at your face. Yeah, exactly. That's a weird. He's just not a. He's not a FIBA player. I will listen. He's a terrific player, but he's not. That's not normally. I mean, you know what? It's, it's not fair to say he does have a little European flair to him, and that he can really be a ball dominant guy. But he's more of a scorer. Than just a passer, you know, like a lot of these lead guards mm-hmm. are over there. He's a winner. Yeah. And he's right. stupid. He's a you hell of a player. Think, you think Jokic is going to play for Serbia? I mean, it's, we've done it. Team USA in the Olympics, we had, remember that plane sure. that had they Booker had guys, and, uh, yeah. And who else? And, uh, Middleton and, and Drew. And, and Drew, yeah. yeah. Um, I don't know. I hope, I hope, uh, I, I hope I, not. I hope not. Yeah. But, you know, country, weird. you know, these guys. Yeah. I get it. All right, folks. Uh, we will see you on Thursday. Take care.